Hey guys, if you like dual motor high power scooters, you might like this. This is the latest from Yumi. It's called the M10. Now Yumi is one of the powerhouse companies in high powered fast dual motor electric scooters. Every scooter I reviewed from them, I've been quite happy with. So I should expect hopefully the same with this model. I'll break everything down for you, show you what this can do, starting off with the speed test. Before I talk about speed, let's talk about power. The Yumi comes with two 1200 watt motors. There is the option to turn off one of those motors and that is powered by a 60 volt, 22.5 amp hour car grade battery. The scooter has two charge ports that give you two chargers. With both those chargers, it only takes three hours for a recharge. Now that power translates to a 43 mile per hour top speed. That's how fast the scooter is rated for. There's three speed modes. I'm gonna show you how fast each of those three modes can go. Dual motors, turbo on, speed mode one, here we go. One is 12, two is 27, and three is 37. I really gotta hold the handlebars tight and, and get low. It does tend to have a little bit of speed wobble. It's not as, it's not as balanced as I would prefer a, a scooter to be, a dual motor scooter to be. Now for fun, I'm gonna switch off the motor and do just a speed test on level one, two, and three again. Single motor, first level is 13. Mode two is 24, and then level three is 32. There is some weight with the scooter. It weighs 77 pounds, but can carry a rider up to 330 pounds. I'm 185. I want to know how long it takes to haul my butt up to 20 miles per hour. This is the acceleration portion of the review. Now there's a bunch of different options for acceleration. I'm gonna run you through all of them and show you what this can do. P level five, you can change the acceleration from a zero to a non-zero start. I want to give you a demo of both of those. So with the non-zero start, as you would imagine, it is instantaneous. I mean, peeling out a little bit there. Then for the non-zero, I wonder how much of a kick you have to give. I'm just gonna give a, a little one here for starters. It's just a tiny little kick and it takes off. In P7, you can change from a soft to a hard start. Okay. Oh, that front wheel is still spinning. Wow, that is soft. That's uh... Man, if that's the soft start, then I'm pretty excited to see what the hard start's gonna be like, cause that was abrupt and fast. All right, here we go, hard start. Okay, that's, uh, that's gentle, much more gentle. Much more gentle for the first 10 feet, so I actually had that reversed. Well, one last thing on the acceleration, I wanna do an eco versus turbo. So for the first one, gonna be eco mode. Full battery speed mode three, here we go. Oh, that is nice and gentle. And on speed mode three, that's gonna top out at 10 miles per hour. And then of course, you got the turbo. Everybody likes the turbo. That's why you buy these. That's it, folks. The Yumi has a range rating of 27 up to 45 miles. Gonna do two range tests. First one at 20 miles per hour without a lot of stop and go. Second one with the scooter full out with a bunch of stop and go. Range one first. Just lost my first battery bar and I've gone 4.93 miles. Two battery bars missing and I've gone 9.93 miles. While I'm on the range test, let me tell you about what you get in the box and all the good stuff about the scooter. So it does come with two chargers, a multi-tool, a manual, a stem case, and a pretty cheapy looking and filling inflator. I did an unboxing about a week and a half ago if you wanna check that out. Now Yumi has been around for a while, so they got a bunch of replacement parts and accessories. As far as the look and design, I really like the coloring of it. I've never seen a scooter that has that color. As far as balance goes, it's not my favorite. I mean, I barely move my toes and this thing just yanks left or right. It's just not balanced well. And even taking my hand off the handlebars, it's a little bit wobbly. So one of my least favorite scooters as far as balance. So about 29, 30 miles an hour. I don't know if you can see that, but the handlebars tend to kind of go back and forth. It's like the swaying motion. You get that death wobble coming about 29, 30. That's when I have to lower down and just really grip those handlebars to minimize that. I'm gonna stop for a second, just talk more about the balance because I think the, the big problem here, there is some, some play. So when I push the handlebars, you can kind of see it does move about a half an inch. My buddy reached out to Yumi and they just told him to tighten this piece, which we already have, that is as tight as it can go. And then there's a piece under here, which we have also tightened, and that wasn't even loose. Both of those were very tight. I think that's what's affecting the balance and the handling. The noise is kind of interesting with the M10. I kind of like it. I'll just be quiet and listen to him. I'm gonna floor it here. 
So really not uh, not too loud. It does make a little bit of a, a humming noise when you punch it. As far as the overall feel, as far as vibration or things rattling, very solid there. Everything feels nice and locked in as far as that goes. Lost three battery bars, I've got two left. I've gone 18.10 miles. As far as off-road scooters go, you know, compare this to the Dualatron or some of those monster scooters, it's actually pretty small. But I like that because it's more of a light and fluffy ride. You know, those those big old scooters, you can't bunny hop. And on this one, I can, I can actually pop that up and bunny hop a couple inches. I'm not sure what the rider size rating is. They didn't have that information. As most of you guys know, I'm 5'11". As far as reaching down and grabbing the grips, it's very natural feeling for me. If you're 6'1 or 6'2", you'd have to bend down a little bit. Diving into the cockpit, starting with the handlebars, like I mentioned before, you gotta, that's, it's a huge length. It doesn't get much wider than this. And that is nice because there's just a bunch of space. I don't feel cramped or crowded in this area at all. And this is the first I've actually seen adjustable handlebars. The grips are wing tipped, they're stationary, they don't move, and it's a nicer filling rubber and a good size too. They're not like overly big, which that can give you hand fatigue, especially for off-road riding. I'm moving on to the stem, which is straight up and down, which I do like. It's not pushing me back towards the back end of the scooter. There's about a foot and a half of space between the stem to my waist. And then as far as height goes, top of the stem is about three inches above my waistline. I wish they would have added another two to three inches on the deck. My left foot goes up on the frame about two or three inches, which isn't the most comfortable. And then with my right foot, I can put it back on the fin. I like the width of it though. I can put my feet side by side. Now below the deck, you got 10 by 3.5 inch air-filled all-terrain tires. And I actually like the tires, I like the design. And then you got adjustable hydraulic shocks. And I will say guys, these shocks are pretty awesome. It is like butter, very, very smooth. I'm just bouncing on this now and it's just like a trampoline. It is, it is got a lot of travel. That wraps up the first race test. My app recorded 24 miles with almost 3,400 feet elevation gains. Gonna charge up the scooter and do range test number two. are for the effect. I got one battery bar gone and I've hit 3.30 miles, been uphill all the way, full throttle. Two battery bars missing and I've hit 5.19 miles and it's been uphill the entire way. All right, the second race test is done. I did ride until the scooter died and uh, the app recorded 23.14 miles with 3,366 feet of elevation gain. So bottom line, you can expect anywhere from 20 to 25 miles, which is really good. I'm very happy with that range. Oh, I, this is definitely the worst area I have ever chosen for off-road riding. I didn't go very far, about a half a mile up the trail, and uh, then I just, it was too gnarly. So the B-roll that you saw from my drone was just this nice little road behind me. Well, I say nice, but it's pretty rough as well. Uh, the scooter overall handled it pretty good, um, especially for the price. One of the better off-road scooters in this price range that I've tested. have chosen poorly. I couldn't find any hill or torque rating for the scooter, but I did find a very steep hill. All right, so this is a 15% grade hill. I've got a full charge on the scooter, dual motors, turbo on, speed mode three. Here we go. Oh, it doesn't even know it's on a hill. It's eating this thing alive. Probably the steepest part right through here. 21, 20. And down to 19, 19 miles per hour for a 50% grade hill with a 185 pound rider. That is pretty awesome. And of course, the next test is testing out the Zoom hydraulic disc brakes coming down the same hill. Okay, top of the hill, 15% grade. This is without any electric brake. Uh, first off, the left side controls the back brake, right side controls the front. Get some speed here, light braking, fairly smooth. Three, two, one, hard. <laughs> I've definitely had more stable braking for hard braking. Oh, hello, dear. How are you doing? Let's do one more hard brake here. About 20, three, two, one. Yeah, that's much better. So this is the world's flatter here, and that was much more controlled. Got a flash touch of road here, and just want to show you the electric braking on this type of terrain. This is where it, it, it gets a little bit annoying. So I'm on level two, hit the brakes now. Oh, and then it, 
It takes, like I said, it takes about a half a second for the ease to kick in. It reminds me of those roller coaster rides as they're coming to stop. They're coming down to stop. You can feel the brakes come on and then you really feel the brakes come on and that's, that's what you got here. Well, let me run you through the LCD screen and control pad. Just two buttons, power button and then an M button. The M button changes the speed mode, one, two, and three. To access the P menu, just hold down both buttons and then use the M button to just scroll through the different P options. Below that you have single dual motor, eco turbo. On the left side, there's the lights. Now, the only thing I didn't like about the M10 was the balance, as I have made mention quite a few times during the review. <laughs> Other than that, it's a very solid scooter. It's got a lot of power. It's fun to manage. It's light enough where you can bunny hop it. It can handle some pretty crazy off-road terrain, and it can conquer some pretty steep hills. So if you want to pick it up, I've got the link in the description. Also, be sure to check out my website, electricrevolutionreviews.com. There you can find all my reviews sorted by price and capability. Hit that like button before you go and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Just, oh, I'm just trotting along, eating some grass, having a lovely, splendid day. <laughs>